And tonight, an exclusive News Channel 5 investigation discovers Governor Bill Lee's team wasted millions of dollars on COVID testing and taxpayers got nothing for their money. That investigation led by our chief investigative reporter Phil Williams uncovered a no bid contract that went to a company with political connections and Phil, what a story. Indeed it is. It's a, a company with political connections, but no experience doing testing. It's a contract that we discovered was awarded over the objections of career state employees. It seems like we need tests. We can line up tests like anyone game for some fun. The beginning of the pandemic produced a huge business opportunity, even for companies with absolutely no healthcare experience. An email 14 <laughs> days ago has turned into a more than full-time job, so that's terrific. Mark Newman was a business school graduate working in Utah's tech community who created a company called Nomi Health to respond to the demand for testing. This was Newman on March 25th. I've been trying to learn as fast as everyone else uh, and break this into kind of systems. So if, uh, if a clinician is listening to this and says, that guy doesn't know what he's talking about, uh, just call me up and help educate me. We're trying to move as fast as we can. <laughs> Less than six weeks later, Tennessee would give Nomi a massive contract worth $26.5 million with no bidding. I mean, this is frankly worse than our worst fears. State Senator Jeff Yarbrough. You know, entering into a $25 million no-bid contract with a company with a lack of experience over the objections of the professional staff of the agency is one of the most shocking things that I've seen in my time in state government. Today we have an important announcement, an important development on the testing front. Utah's Republican Governor Gary Herbert was first to give a no-bid contract to the new company. An email showed two weeks later, GOP political consultant Tony Simon from Atlanta was pitching a no-me contract to Tennessee Governor Bill Lee's chief of staff, Blake Harris, who put him directly in touch with Health Commissioner Lisa Piercy. Two weeks after that, Tennessee Health Department staff got the good news that the commissioner is arranging for a contract, probably already signed, with a company called Nomi to facilitate mass testing for COVID. The problems here were so obvious from the beginning that it's clear we just didn't follow a good process for contracting. Uh, it's been a lot of fun to see how fast things can coalesce. Uh, Besides Newman's own words, there were already warning signs from a story in the Salt Lake Tribune the day before Piercy signed the contract, warning of a potential public health disaster in Utah. If you just went back through the podcasts and stuff that was coming out of this, this group of companies, the language was kind of dismissive of medical expertise, sort of bragging about the fact that we've thrown this together in three weeks, we figured this out. Reporter Aaron Alberti broke that story that quoted an email from one of the Utah governor's own experts that a pandemic is not the time for amateurs to learn. He worried that Nomi was finding far fewer COVID cases than other testing operations. I mean, the difference was pretty stark. There were about half the rate of positive results that all the other Utah testers were getting. Which raised the prospect that you were getting lots of false negatives. Potentially, that was the concern. We are on the forefront of testing proactively. Inside Piercy's department, the head of the state's laboratory services reacted. Please tell me we can get out of this contract, or better yet, it has not been signed. The response, the contract was already signed, sealed, and delivered. The commissioner would like to start in a couple of weeks. If the leader of our health response isn't talking to her own lab when signing a testing company, uh, it makes you question whether anything's going right. This is a public-private partnership between the state of Iowa, Nomi Health, and... The a few days later, another article warned that a Nomi contract signed by Iowa's Republican governor wasn't living up to its promise either. Piercy's chief medical officer, this one worries me. We're going to need to keep on our toes. The next day, Piercy's laboratory team went on the record with their significant concerns that Nomi's tests would generate false negative results, which they warned could lead to strong political backlash. 
Other emails complained that Nomi's testing could only produce one half of what they say they could provide and that the project was, quote, actually slowing us down and taking away resources that could be used to increase testing. Still, the staff was cautioned the Nomi project was, quote, a very sensitive issue with the commissioner. I think what was most surprising was to see how quickly and how aggressively the career professionals who are, you know, spending every day trying to get people tested responded to try to stop this contract from happening. We've helped the state source something like 2 million pieces of product for, uh, for, the, for the first responder community, masks, gowns, suits. Mark Newman and other NOMI officials had also claimed they could deliver the personal protective equipment needed for the testing process. But instead of medical gloves, they delivered breeders' gloves used by veterinarians. They also got hydrogen peroxide wipes that were for veterinary use and not appropriate for disinfecting from coronavirus. And their N95 masks were not FDA approved. Piercy's chief medical officer responded to the quality concerns. In the bigger scheme of things, this is one I'm not sure I'd throw myself or the project over the sword for. The other big question is why were so many people inside the Lee administration willing to fall over the sword for this company? A month later, a formal study by the state's health laboratory finally concluded they had no confidence in the reliability of the NOMI tests, and as a result, we cannot endorse the use of the NOMI test system for COVID-19. On June 15th, the state issued a notice of termination of contract, claiming NOMI had caused life, health, or safety to be jeopardized. But in the end, Commissioner Piercy approved a payment of $5.9 million to settle with the company. Now, now, just in the last hour, I got a statement from the Department of Health. It does not explain why the commissioner ignored the advice of the career state employees in her department. It does claim that the state was contractually obligated to pay that $6 million. But again, it does not explain why the state would have been required to pay for something that didn't work. Of course, we'll keep asking these kinds of questions. Back to you. We're glad you will. Thanks so much, Phil.